Hello and welcome. So this is uh, BA 240, uh, Fund Accounting, lecture number one. So we're, we're going to do these lectures and uh, then we're going to end up doing a lot of the <clears throat> hands-on work in class. So uh, as you go through these lectures, there are going to be uh, letters on the top right corner of the slide. And so what you need to do as you uh, watch this video is you need to write down those letters and then uh, at the end there's a, a, it's a, a lecture quiz. You need to go in and, and report those letters that you wrote down. So that's going to be part of the uh, task to get the points for uh, any of these lectures throughout the term. Okay. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to cover some of the basic uh, reporting and principles for fund accounting. Uh, and so the fund accounting is related to accounting that's done with government entities and also uh, nonprofit entities also use some of the same principles in reporting um, principles uh, as well for accounting in nonprofits. So th these are going to be our learning objectives, right, as we go through this lecture. Uh, we're going to be able to first distinguish between governmental and nonprofit, and then that group of governmental and nonprofit, uh, we're going to dis distinguish between those and uh, for profit entities. So, what's different? Uh, what's similar uh, when we come to accounting and financial reporting? Okay, we're going to talk about the, author uh, the authoritative bodies for governmental and nonprofit. And uh, what constitutes GAAP or the generally accepted accounting principles for each of these. Uh, we're also going to talk about some financial reporting uh, for the different uh, state and local government entities as well as federal uh, government entities. Um, we're we're going to talk about what's called the CAFR or the Comprehensive Annual Financial Reports for uh, governmental entities. And um, then we're going to talk about uh, the different financial statements for federal and not-for-profit or non-profit organizations. So, so this is the main idea of the of the differences here, okay? And uh, the differences between um, the for-profit and the governmental and non-profit, right? So. Uh, the, the main idea is its relationship, these entities' relationships with society, how they raise their money, and then the expectations of how they spend their money, right? For-profit organizations are going to be focused on profits and um, increasing shareholder value, right? Shareholder, uh, people that own the company, the shareholders. Right, and so people in the governmental and nonprofit accounting realm, really, instead of being shareholders, they're what we call stakeholders, right? Or or people that have a vested interest somehow um, in the entity. Okay, whether that's a citizen um, of a state or a, a local government, city, you know, uh, or uh, the national, right, a, a country, or whether that's a donor, a specific donor for a nonprofit, right, or um, somebody that actually receives the services of the nonprofit organization, whatever that, that may be. Okay. Uh, Management's role as well in the governmental nonprofit accounting side of, uh, of things is also more of a um, more of a steward, right, over the funds instead of somebody that is there to drive the profits and uh, make change. 
they're a person they're a person that may be over the, the stewardship of the mission of the nonprofit making sure they use their resources correctly all right so so the there are different types of governments you know that so the main dis, uh, the main distinguishing point that we're going to make here is basically uh, size and scope right so so the the general purpose government which is going to be over like the feds which is over the entire united states and entire country state government right cities townships so these typically are going to be over uh, a region and provide general services the special purpose government is going to be they could be over a region as well they could be um uh, ge geographically located or they could just be for very specific services like school systems right uh, colleges um, hospitals there, here we're getting into some more specialized services fire protection districts those kind of things okay you, you know you notice the the letter at the top right corner of the screen this these are the kind of letters we're talking about here so Feel free to uh, write that one down and make a note as we go through. Um, I'm not going to point all of them out, but just wanted to make sure to draw your attention to that one. Okay, so here's the not for uh, not for profit organizations, right? What kind of what kind of organizations are these? Well, they may be churches, right? So here's a church right there. Uh, maybe something like like for example uh, a theater group, right? Or um, uh, some type of uh, college. Right, private college. There's many not-for-profit organizations that uh, offer educational services as well. There's uh, maybe a museum uh, could be one, uh, or a historical uh, monument type of a deal, um, uh, like a museum. Or maybe it's just uh, like service uh, groups or organizations, clubs that that are uh, based on. Um, serving the community okay uh, one of the main points here with this not-for-profit really is just the focus on taxation that they're not uh, they're not taxed right not taxed um, so they are tax exempt so some points here um, that that kind of cover the as we go through some of these slides, just we need to make sure that we understand what we're talking about. So in this specific slide, we're talking about governmental, not for profit. So kind of the big uh, umbrella. Okay, we're covering all of these things in this slide. So, um, so, so here's so, and these are the points that we're going to be making here uh, as we go down. So first of all. Um, the people that are part of nonprofit and governmental, right? The stakeholders here, there is no uh, proportional uh, repayment or proportional benefits. So there is no expectation that when you pay your taxes, that you are going to get a, a refund of those taxes. Sometimes it happens. Everybody uh, pays according to if there's. Um, you know that but but the point is 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 that there there is no repayment right donors give to nonprofits not necessarily to eventually get their money back but to give and and uh, and to have the organization then control those funds or assets that are given there is no proportional benefit um, expectation right so really these are the expectations or the uh, things that people don't expect in any ways with for-profit or um, as as compared to for-profit there's no proportional benefits in that uh, like people that pay more taxes don't get more benefit for the more for the additional taxes paid you know everybody drives on the same roads they have the same fire department police department within a city just because uh, one person uh, pays you know a hundred thousand dollars in taxes and their neighbor pays uh, only a thousand dollars in taxes 
uh, they're going to get the same benefits uh, typically no matter what. So that's proportional benefits. Same thing with the not-for-profit not organization uh, services. Uh, there's no profit motive, right? It is good if uh, uh, a government entity or a not-for-profit organization um, is able to uh, have a balanced budget right where they at least are balanced in their spending and their um, revenues but really the idea is not necessarily to uh, make a profit out of their existence and then there's no uh, transferable ownership so no uh, like for example no shares there's no shares you can buy or sell of a of a city right or of a not-for-profit uh, organization. Okay, so this one's specifically government, right? So really the power is in the hands of the people. Okay, that that power is then delegated uh, through elections, right? Through the election process. Um, the, some of the some of the government entities, as they as they're run by these elected officials, uh, for the most part, right? A lot of uh, school, all the schools ultimately are ran by the the uh, the board of education, right? The school board members. Um, cities are ultimately ran by the city council. Even though there are managers underneath those bodies, really. Uh, those bodies are the ones that can hire and fire those people, right? So really that's where a lot of the decision-making, hiring, and all that, uh, the vision comes from is through those elected officials, okay? Uh, the, there, there's also some accountability uh, and power that comes from the layers of government that we have in the U.S., right? So just because... Uh, like, for example, TVCC is a separate government entity in, the, in that it has its own board of education and has its own taxation power and all this stuff. Uh, it still has to answer to, uh, like, for example, the, the Department of Education at the Fed level, right? And uh, all of the, the different uh, requirements that are made for, like, to be able to... Uh, give out degrees and to offer financial aid and those those type of things to students okay so the organization also has the power to tax right that's the main point for the governmental uh, most of the funds come from taxation there are some entities and we'll talk about this later how this works uh, this is going to be one of the one of the key points of and how to do the accounting for this and the reporting for this but there's also some fees right so that are like in a city you pay your uh, utility bill right and basically you're paying it to the city the water and sewer uh, service is really something that they charge you uh, for use and so that's that's part of it but really the governmental entity is defined by the power to tax Okay, so here are the different governing bodies. So uh, number one, right here, the FASB, or the Federal Accounting Standards Board. Over two types of entities. They're over business or the for-profit organizations, right? So if you've taken the principles of accounting class, you've definitely uh, heard of the, the GAAP accounting principles that are made by the FASB. Okay, there's also the, they are also over the not-for-profit, non-governmental not-for-profits. Okay, the next one here is the GASB, or the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. And they're really over all, the, all of the uh, uh, state and local governments, right? The cities, the states, um, other uh governmental not-for-profits okay governmental not-for-profits are going to be those uh the school districts the hospitals the anything owned by the government or basically that's governmental that's uh, not a state or local government right not a city or a state or a county it's going to be the other 
the other things like uh, in, in Ontario, for example, uh, this, the library uh, district is a governmental not for profit. And they have to follow GASB uh, financial uh, standards. Okay, then the last one here is the Federal Accounting Standards Advisory Board. So that extra A in here is where the advisory board comes into play. And they're really over the feds, right? So they do all of the the main, um, they lay out all the standards for federal governmental uh, financial reporting. All the fed stuff, including agencies and departments within the fed. Okay, so the main, the main point with the governmental accounting, right? Uh, accountability right really is the cornerstone of of all the financial reporting done in at the government so who are uh, we report uh, or who are we accountable to we're accountable to the citizens the people so we're really trying to give them a picture as we do a, a fund accounting in governmental entities we're trying to give the public or the citizenry a picture of what the financial uh, well-being or the uh, goings-on of their uh, governmental entity is. All right, so now next is a concept that is called uh, interperiod equity. So what this relates to is it relates to the concept of the fiscal year okay so uh, we have uh, and a lot of a lot of entities run from January to December right so that's the normal year right that's the calendar year anyways but a lot of government entities like the college for example TVCC runs from uh, July to June, right? So that's the fiscal year. The fiscal year, okay? And within this fiscal year, there are specific uh, revenues allotted to that year, right? So this is the tax, right? Tax revenues. So tax, we'll just say tax revenue there. And then along as well, during this year, there are uh, certain benefits. Okay, so we've got the revenues and the benefits. Benefits uh, are, you know, the, the things we get that we pay for, right? So expenditures. And... Uh, Really, the point with interperiod equity is that uh, the uh, we're, we're disclosing whether these revenues that come into the year here are sufficient to pay for the current benefits that we get. Okay, for that year, or are is there going to be some uh, taxes in the future that we're some taxpayers in the future that are going to have to pay for these uh, for these benefits that we're getting right okay and so a, a lot of a lot of times this is also you know another concept that relates is is like a balanced budget right which is uh, kind of it kind of relates to this because at the very beginning of the year right to start the year, you have a budget that you that you've got to establish, right? And that budget should have in it that the interperiod equity concept of matching the tax, right, up with the benefits that you're going to get. Now that's really what the true balanced budget is, and so that's that's one of the concepts that talks with interperiod equity and we'll we'll come back to this idea when we talk about the fund financial statements okay first we're going to go through some of the objectives 
uh, for reporting. We're going to start with the state and local governments. Okay, and one of the objectives for reporting is we're we're comparing our actuals to our budget. Okay, so these these in a lot of ways it kind of flip it over. There's actually some worksheets and reporting that can be done uh, to help management control the budget, and th those are called budget to actuals. Budget to actuals. Okay, and that's just saying, are we on budget? Uh, did we did we uh, go over budget in certain areas? And so, really, that's one of the main objectives of financial reporting is to help us match our budget up with our actuals. We also want to assess our conditions and results of operations, right? Uh, there's also, we want to also um, figure out if we're in compliance, um, either with the federal uh, compliance regulation, the regulations that we have to stay in compliance with, uh, state regulations that we have to stay in compliance with, maybe even local county or city uh regulation or codes that we have to stay in compliance with. So that's one of the other main objectives of the state and local government uh, financial reporting. And then in the end here, we're evaluating efficiency and effectiveness. And then really, this is a measure of how is management doing? How is our how are we doing with uh, managing these funds? And are we being effective in what we're doing? OK, so now we now for the objectives of the federal government, which are a little different than state and local, right? So we have an overarching uh, uh, objective of having budget integrity, actually having a budget for one thing, right? First, we're, we need to have a budget. Second, we hopefully need to have a balanced budget, uh, to, uh, which may not always necessarily be a requirement of the federal government, right? A lot of state and local governments have to have that balanced budget. Uh, feds don't necessarily have to have it. Um, then that gets back to macroeconomics and fiscal uh, policy, right? Uh, if you want to take that macro class, it's a fun one to take. Okay, so and then the other one, other objective is operating performance. Uh, we're going to talk about specific uh, operating or um, performance reports. It's called PAR. We'll talk about that later. Uh, stewardship, this is um, how our directors and our managers are doing. And then uh, are we, do we have adequate systems and controls? Are we really doing, uh, fulfilling our mission as a government entity, right? It helps us answer that question. Next one here, this is not for profit. So this is a little different because we've got the FASB involved here, right? Not the GASB. Uh, FASB is involved and so what we're doing here is we're making sure that our resources are allocated correctly uh, that's one of the objectives the other objective here with uh, not-for-profits is uh, are, are we able to provide our services we have a mission here especially with not-for-profits are we able to fulfill that mission and meet meet our goals assessing management how's management doing in, in its stewardship and performance Accountability again, right? We're going back to accountability with government and nonprofits. And then the next one here is net resources and changes in them. So really are we is our trend are we trending upward and growing as an organization or are we trending downward and and are we not financially healthy? Okay, so here's here's the uh, minimum requirements for general purpose external financial reporting. So this is mo mostly for uh, our State and local governments is really what this is kind of geared towards. Uh, so the very first one is management discussion and analysis. This is what we call the, uh, for short, is the MDNA. This is where management gets to say, hey, these are some issues that we're seeing, and this is how we think we did as management over this, over this stuff. Uh, we've got two sets of financials that we're going to be talking about, government-wide and fund financial statements. And then all of this extra information below, which is just extra stuff that we need to know and stuff that we also are required to give under uh, FASB or GASB, right, requires us to give. And then any uh, anything else that uh, we want to give, right, that's not required necessarily. 
Okay, so here's here's the two financial statements, government wide, uh, which is really trying to help us focus in and and look like a business. Um, look at governments kind of like a business in, under the business model, and then fund financial statements, which is more they're more detailed, uh, and they're about funds. We'll talk about what funds are here in a minute. Okay, but first we're going to talk about our government-wide financial statements. So the government-wide financial statements are going to be uh, really, again, we're looking at things like it's like it's a business, right? Okay, operational accountability, flow of economic resources, where are things, where is the tax, where are the taxes being spent, right? And all of our resources being spent. And are we getting enough taxes for uh, another thing? This is under the accrual basis of accounting. Accrual can be summed up, really the, the main kind of idea is our revenues are recorded when earned. Not when received necessarily, but when earned. And then our expenditures are going to be recorded when incurred. Okay, and incurred really uh, is governed by what's called the matching principle. Okay, matching principle matches the expenses up with revenue. Okay, so just because we bought that new piece of equipment doesn't mean we uh, show all of the expenses on this year's financial statements. We may. Uh, do what's called depreciate. We may depreciate that piece of equipment out for 10 years because that piece of equipment is going to help us generate revenue or fulfill our mission here in the government for 10 years. And that's really where the government-wide financial statement um, is is looking as different. Okay, so this is the cruel basis. Okay, so so now we need to talk about what is a fund. All right, so the fund is. Uh, a separate set of accounts to keep track of resources uh, segre segregated for a particular purpose. So the purpose here, like for example, we have TVCC, right? The college is laid out here. And under the accounting structure of TVCC, we have a bunch of different funds. Okay. Make them all the same size here. Okay. So these funds or these different separate set of accounts are set up for specific purposes. Okay, so one fund might be, for example, financial aid, fine aid. Okay, aid. There we go. One might be for uh, operations like the bookstore. Definitely a different purpose than financial aid, right? What we're trying to accomplish there. Another one might be set up for ASG, right? Different uh, different club funds and all that stuff um, in there. Different club monies. Um, there might be at one just for general operations, right? So we've got to we've got to pay the pay the uh, the power and the and the uh, the water bill, and we also have to maybe take care of the campus, um, mow the lawn, stuff like that. So general fund, right? Okay. So these are all. This is kind of a a setup where the the how the funds are set up right under the main organization these are all separate sets of accounts so we'll talk more about that later we'll break it down into why we do separate funds and how we track and report the separate funds uh, so the main financial statement or the one of the two right we have the um, the government wide and then the fund financial statements so this is the second set the fund financial statements are all about fiscal accountability. Again, here we are talking about fiscal stuff. Short-term flow of current of current financial resources. So really short-term fiscal, we're, we're really talking about that fiscal year again. Short-term, this, this time that we say, okay, this is our fiscal year. Okay, and so that's really what the fund financial statements are focused on is this fiscal year. The taxes coming in and the benefits or the expenditures connected to that. Um, then we have what's called a modified. We, we, we operate this set of financial statements under what's called the modified accrual basis. 
different from accrual, right? Because it's modified. And the way it's modified, it looks a little bit more like cash. But really, the, the revenues are recognized not when they're earned necessarily, but when they become measurable and available. Sounds a lot more like cash, right? So like when we have access to it or when it's available to us and measurable. Uh, the next set here is our expenditures, right? So our expenditures are recognized when they are when an obligation is incurred that will be paid from current available financial resources. So this goes back to the fiscal year, right? So this is really matching up the expense. Okay. With the uh, current resources. Right, or the current like tax base, or the current uh, you know, whatever we have maybe in in our organization currently. So it's really exp expenses, and we're matching them with current. Uh, again, kind of kind of a little a little different than what we did before, right? So that's fun financial statements. Now we're going on here to uh, the different different categories of fund, right? Funds. So we have our TVCC here again. So we'll that's our organization. And then within that organization, we have different categories of funds, right? So we talked about some of the funds that TVCC may have, but let's talk about maybe one a specific proprietary fund, like like uh, the fund like the business or the bookstore. Okay, so here's the bookstore. That's a separate setup uh, fund. That is like a proprietary fund. Okay, that's one category. It's a proprietary fund. A bookstore is a good example of that. It's a business-like activity of the government. Right, so the books, we buy the books, we resell them. We make uh, maybe a little profit to help pay for the book uh, store uh, staff and, and whatnot. Okay, another type is the fiduciary funds. So uh, financial aid is a good example of um, a fiduciary fund. Okay, so uh, and the trust, the trust type of fiduciary fund. And where that, the way that works is, for example, you have the feds out here. Uh, the student goes and turns in their FAFSA, right? Um and then the Fed say, oh, here's some money for this student, right? So here's the student over here. And they, they give us money. And the, the college doesn't spend that money. They say, okay, first we need to pay for the tuition and fees for the student, right? And then next, anything left over goes to the student. So that in, in really, that becomes kind of like a trust fund, right? right? So we get this money. It's really not... T, uh, TVCCs to spend, we first have to uh, fulfill the requirements that the feds put on us, right? So that's really a fiduciary fund. That's a type of fiduciary fund, okay? And so, yeah, and so those are, there, and there's all sorts of different uh, categories, like types of funds and why they're set up, all governed by GASB, right? So the GASB says, hey, these are what are really the types of funds you should be having, and this is the purposes you should be setting them up for uh, in general kind of terms and they kind of let the um, entities then take those uh, guidelines and, and apply them to their own situation so they can set up their funds properly. Okay, the, the next set here, and this is really all for uh, state and local governments here, is the CAFR or the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, it's called the CAFR. And the CAFR is really a, a uh, the, the main report, right? You can get it in a little booklet or maybe like a PDF from any organization that, that uh, uh, does CAFRs, right? And so uh, it's not necessarily required, but a lot of organizations do it because really it's what their stakeholders or their citizens want to see. They want to have that information. And so, uh, and it's laid out, the CAFR is laid out uh, by the GASB standards. And inside the CAFR, there is an introductory section, a financial section, and a statistical section. Okay, so let's talk about what each section is here. What 
what's inside of it. So the introductory section has title page, table of contents, uh, letter of transmittal. It's basically like what what is the CAFR and uh, who is it intended yeah, who's it, who is its intended users? Um, and then any, any other information management wants to put in there. It's not the MDNA. Uh, that'll be in the next section. But it's really just maybe maybe it's some history. Uh, any any other special information the the uh, management wants to put right up front in the intro. Uh, so the financial section is going to include these things right here, right? Uh, and it, it really, it's that with the CAFR, you want to put all the information in that the auditors are going to be looking at, right? So, including the auditor's report. In the end, the auditors say, "Hey, all this stuff in the CAFR is is either is is fully and pre uh, fairly presented under uh, GAAP, under the generally accepted accounting principles." So, the auditors give the opinion in the report in there if it is. A good one, hopefully, for that entity. They could also give uh, maybe a modified or even an adverse opinion if they're doing a horrible job with things. Um, there's the MDNA. That's where the government says, "Hey, this is how we think we're doing, and what's going on with our organization." Uh, financial statements. We'll talk more about that. Or we actually already did talk about a lot of the financial statements that are involved there. Um, the extra information that's um, required by uh, by GAP to put in the financial in the CAFR uh, by GASB and then we're also uh, have more detail and fun statement stuff so lots of information in the CAFR okay so there's the statistical section and this is really where we're putting information that uh, that goes into more detail needed by the readers whoever those readers are what they want to know maybe they want to know um, other points of data, right? They want to know um, how many, I don't know, like for example, they want to know how many feet of sewer line a hit city has, or they want to know um, information like different ratios of um, how what the average taxpayer is paying or what the, you know, the average uh city employee uh, health care bill is stuff like that all, all sorts of other extra information that might be interesting to people okay now we're shifting gears here we're talking about the fed stuff these are federal requirements and so federal requirements are um are laid out uh by by gap by their governing body and um, really, that in, the information, hopefully, the, the main information for all the federal government is prepared by the U.S. Treasury. That's for the government-wide stuff. For specific agencies, they're each going to prepare their own agencies and departments, right? Uh, and and that's going to be um, under the guidance of what they, they call the, uh, the OMB or the Office of Management and Budget. And there's a there's specific uh, circular or regulations laid out for those uh, for the financial reporting that's required from the feds for their agencies and departments. OK, so the main government wide, the, the, all the Fed. We is not there's never been an audit opinion issued for the for the all the, for the like the entire U.S. government. Um, which is bad and good. You kind of look at the federal government. A lot of people look at them and try to put on the federal government um, different guidelines that states and and cities follow. There, it's not the same. It's really not going to be the same thing, right? And, and and especially if you try to compare the government finances with your own uh, household budget, not the same thing. And so. Um, for that, for the purposes of, of the differences, there really isn't an audit done of the federal government by an outside auditor. There is a lot of internal audit going on, and there's a lot of reporting going on to hopefully make things make things transparent. But there's not an audit that's done. Um, and, and there may, and really, what's trying to be rooted out by all the reporting that's done is where where there's deficiencies found. Hopefully, we're trying to fix that. Um, so, anyways. Um, the, some of the reporting that is done 
is what's called the citizen's guide, right? So it's hopefully it's plain language. There's also an MDNA that's done. Um, and then there's lots of different financial statements that are issued. Um, okay. And then, and then a bunch of other information, including budgetary information and, and, uh, and uh, performance information. So we'll talk about performance information here. So this is really, when it comes down to the department or agency, uh, they all have to issue their performance reports. Okay. So really what they do is they set goals and then they then they report on how they do on those goals. So are they doing what they said they would do? And um, and so uh, the, the, here are the four sections of the performance report, right? So this is uh, MDNA, right? It's kind of an overview of how they think they're doing anyways and what their mission is, what they are supposed to be doing. Uh, there, it lays out the um, the goals so this is what they said they would do uh, in relation to their mission. And then now we've got the financial statements, which really is this is what they did do financially anyways, right? So there, this is hopefully all fact. This is not part of the goals and, and the fulfillment. Um, this is normal, really related to balance sheet. Uh, the net uh, changes in net position is really kind of the income statement. Um, or related to kind of what the income statement would be in a for for profit, and then we've got a bunch of budgetary information that's laid out, as well as kind of the tax uh, information that's laid out for each. Uh, how much tax um, how much taxes is used in the department? Um, you know, where where is their money coming from, and what is the burden that they're placing upon the tax uh, base or the citizens? Okay, so here we go uh, for not profit or not for profit. Uh, hopefully, it's supposed to be the target here is decision useful information, right? For all the stakeholders, donors, members, creditors, all these people that have a stake in this organization. Um, and so we're decision useful, and we really want to know how is management doing? Are they are they good stewards of the resources? Uh, so we have laid out here, kind of. This is really dire directly linked to the for profit, right? So statement of financial position is kind of the balance sheet for a not for profit. Statement of activities is what the income statement is called in not for profit, and then statement of cash flows is what it is. Okay, these are all laid out by FASB and what is supposed to be included in each. Um, one of the main differences between profit and not-for-profit is this idea of uh, presenting or getting a statement of financial uh, state financial statements set out in functional expense uh, areas. So classif classifying the financial statements by funct functional expense. And so one way to look at it is, so like, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, add audio to this. Uh, the original recording didn't have audio, so I'm going to talk, talk about the functional expenses. So we're going to use YMCA here as an example. And we're going to say YMCA has different, uh, let's lay them out in departments, right? So, um, or different programs, so that like they have a pool. Um, they also have maybe after school stuff there and we're also going to, going to add maybe some uh, daycare um, and uh, what else does YMCA have? They have, uh, let's see here, maybe they have some some other community uh, ed programs. So these are maybe the different kind of programs that YMCA has. And so what we're going to do is we're going to divide the expenses up according to those programs that they have, right? So we're going to classify the expenses according to into program and into uh, also support service categories. So support services um, might be, for example, information technology. So like maybe computers that are used in all of these programs are going to be the, maybe a support service that's split out uh, from the different programs. All right.
right. So the next thing that we talk about in the not-for-profit organizations is uh, these three categories uh, for net assets. Uh, and they are uh, permanent restricted, temporary restricted, and unrestricted. This is all, uh, these are classified according to donor imposed restrictions. So say a donor comes up and they say, hey, I'm going to give you some money. Uh, and I, you can only use it for this forever, right? You can only use it for this certain scholarship or this certain uh, uh, program or whatever you're doing. And so that's permanently restricted can't use it for anything else right uh, maybe they say you can only use this for the YMCA for uh, lifeguard salaries you know until all the money runs out so that it, that there is permanently restricted we also have temporarily restricted which may be uh, you have to use this for lifeguard salaries for example for the next five years and then you can use it for uh, anything else uh, for the YMCA and so that there is is your temporarily uh, restricted um, classification then you may have unrestricted which is you know people just they, they may give you money and and uh, that's uh, no restrictions at all they they like your organization say use it however you would like right and so that's going to be your uh, unrestricted funds So temporarily restricted again. Just to review, is going to be those funds that are that are uh, do have restrictions put upon them, but only for a certain period of time, and or maybe only until you accomplish something within the organization. Then you can use it for something else. Okay. And so the, the other option, the other uh, thing here with with uh, classifying expenses or categories in not for profits is there may be overhead uh, that's going to be split out. So that's the, something that we can uh, split out you know uh, buildings that house several different programs uh, or grounds facilities that house diff different programs um, also fundraising expenses uh, how do you how do you raise your money you, that's something else that's also split out separately um, from your programs and, and um, supporting services so that has to be reported separately for not-for-profit organizations. Okay, so some of the other reporting um, things that are that um, may come up are popular reports, right? So these are for specifically they're used for marketing purposes or for public information type of, type of programs. Uh, they are not audited, so they're unaudited. Um, and they, they may include financial information, right? So that's the idea is you're going to be putting financial information into these typically in a, a condensed fashion. You're not going to have a whole balance sheets or whole uh, income statement type type of a deal. You're just going to have bits and pieces. A lot of these things are, can can be misused, and so they have to specifically, you know, people have to know that they're unaudited. They are taken from the financials, but they're not a whole picture. Uh, but they they definitely can be used for marketing purposes. And then the next uh, thing here is a service efforts and accomplishments so these this is really uh, gives us um, some metrics on how our uh, how we are doing at reaching our goals right are we achieving the things that we're setting out to do and what are we doing about reaching our goals so mission fulfillment is what this is about okay so the last one this is really the last slide here and what this is is, is it's about what a financial uh, or a fund accounting is and is not okay so the first part here it says even when developed to the ultimate stage of perfection governmental accounting cannot become a guarantee of for, of good government right so really the idea is government fund accounting or doing this accounting correctly doesn't mean government's going to be uh, effective or good in the end um, but what we do get out of it is the next part. It says, at best, it can never be more than a valuable tool for promotion of sound financial management. So really the goal here is to become a tool, 
to be another um, something that really does push for being fiscally responsible and having financial management under control, even if government's fallen apart around the, a good financial setup. Okay, just to hold people accountable. Again, accountability is is number one here. Um, I appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully, you got all the letters. You can go take all the letters and you can use them um, for the chapter quiz, and um, then you can go on and. Um, Keep continue on with the course. Uh, have a good day, and we will talk to you uh, later. Thank you. Bye.